Dr. Dr. Craig, um, can I ask you a question about the concept of original sin, please? All right. Um, to my understanding of uh, the Protestant Christian traditions, at least, um, the, one of the philosophical frameworks is that since the event known as the fall, every human being who's come into existence is tarred with the mark of original sin mm -hmm. from the point of, of birth or conception or some point. And I'm just, I've always struggled to reconcile human beings coming into existence already in a state of original sin mm -hmm. and then being subsequently held accountable for that mm -hmm. in an eternal judgment. I just wonder if you have any thoughts. Yes, I do have some thoughts. I teach a Sunday school class called Defenders in which we have a survey of all of the major um, parts of Christian doctrine from beginning to end. Um, this is on our website. Uh, we're currently in the third series of surveying Christian doctrine and apologetics. And you'll find my lectures on original sin in the section called Doctrine of Salvation. Now, Christians differ in their view of original sin. So if you have reservations about this, you will be in very good company. It's not as though this is a cardinal doctrine of Christianity. The Catholic Church holds to the doctrine of original sin, but Eastern Orthodoxy, for example, does not. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, it's believed that we all bear a corrupted nature as a result of sin's entry through Adam into the human race, but we don't hold or bear original guilt. We're not condemned for something we didn't do. Um, in Protestant theology, although Reformed uh, theology or, uh, holds to the doctrine of original sin, uh, many Arminians do not. Um, many would think that it was simply through the fall of man that sin entered into the world, but that we do not carry the guilt of Adam's original sin. So there is a diversity of opinion within Christendom on this, and this is one of the, the strengths of the Christian faith, I think, that it permits this kind of diversity. Now, if one is convinced of the doctrine of original sin, what might be said in defense of it? Well, here would be my best shot. I would say that Adam can be regarded as the federal head of the human race. That is to say, he is our representative or proxy before God, so that what he does, he does as our representative. For example, I will get every year a proxy form for stockholders meetings in mutual funds that we invest in. And if you cannot attend the stockholders meeting yourself, you sign the proxy form and somebody else whom you've authorized will vote in your place. He doesn't vote for himself. This is your vote, but he votes for you. And in the same way, one can understand Adam to be our proxy before God. He is the federal head of the human race. Now someone might object, well fine, but who appointed him to act on my behalf? I didn't authorize him to, to vote for me. Why should I be held responsible for what my representative did? And here I think that the um, person who believes in original sin might plausibly reply that if you had been in that situation, then you would have done exactly the same thing. So that no one can complain that their representative failed to act in a way that was consistent with their own will. And I think that that makes it reasonable to believe in the doctrine of original sin. Uh, Adam was my proxy before God, and what he did, I would have done had I been there myself. Um, and therefore his guilt is imputed to me.